Welcome. Welcome to The Hague and the Nuclear Security Summit. We are proud to be the organizers of the summit. It is the largest conference ever held in the Netherlands. A summit devoted to an important topic. The issues we will be addressing over the next few days impact on the security of all the people of the world. The chance that nuclear or radioactive material could fall into the hands of terrorists is small, fortunately. But if it were to happen, the consequences could be enormous. We need to do everything we can to prevent nuclear terrorism. And we have gathered here with that clear aim. Nuclear material has many good uses. It can generate energy, and in hospitals, medical isotopes help fight cancer. But if it fell into the wrong hands, nuclear material could also be used to make a nuclear weapon. And malicious people could use radioactive material to make a dirty bomb, causing massive social disruption. President Obama put this issue on a global agenda in 2009. I endorse his view that nuclear terrorism is one of the greatest threats to international security. All the more so since there are relatively few binding international agreements in this area. We have universally binding agreements on medication, food safety and aviation security, to name only three areas. When it comes to nuclear security, we can definitely do better. So, what are the goals of this summit? We seek to reduce the chance that nuclear or radioactive material could fall into the hands of terrorists in various ways. One, limiting the amount of hazardous nuclear material in the world. Second, better securing the material that already exists. And thirdly, stepping up international cooperation in this area. A great deal has already happened, thanks to the previous summits in Washington and Seoul. But we have to be honest. It's not nearly enough. In 2013, 146 incidents involving nuclear and radioactive material were reported to the IAEA. Most of these related to material that had temporarily gone missing. But the possibility of a serious incident continues to hang over us. My ambition as chair of this NSS is to raise the bar even higher and boost the security of our people even more. The groundwork for this has already been laid by negotiating teams of the participating countries. To use a football metaphor, the ball is already on the penalty spot. But now it's up to the leaders to kick it into the goal. And that's what we are here to do over the next few days. We have worked hard to put together an innovative program for this summit. Countries will still issue national statements. But a number of them will present their standpoints in the form of video statements. There will also be an informal session for the heads of delegation only, where we will talk about the future of the NSS process. We will also have an interactive policy discussion about the national and international response to an incident involving nuclear terrorism. And finally, on Tuesday, you will read the final communique of this paperless summit with the help of the NSS app on your tablet or smartphone. Big international conferences like the NSS are often a good opportunity to discuss current affairs in the margins. Ukraine is one of these current issues right now. And several leaders will take advantage of their presence here to talk about pressing issues outside the direct scope of the NSS. I conclude. Enhancing nuclear security is a complicated process. But kilo by kilo, we are reducing the amount of nuclear material and step by step, we are improving security measures. Here, against the fitting backdrop of The Hague, the city of peace and justice, we will move forward, making the world a bit safer. Thank you very much. Um, I just want to join Prime Minister Rutte in welcoming all of you to the Netherlands and to The Hague. I think we're looking forward to a number of very exciting days in this international conference that is meant to create more security for all our citizens worldwide. And I do believe that important steps will be set here that will make it possible in 2016 to also have a successful follow-up of the summit and, um, in uh, Washington, D.C. 
The Prime Minister already um, mentioned the fact that obviously um, nuclear security is not going to be the only subject on the agenda for many of the participants in the summit in the next couple of days. And as hosts, our aim is to ensure that all the participants have the possibility to discuss whatever they like with whomever they like uh, here in The Hague. And we will make that possible uh, to the full extent of our uh, capabilities. I also want to say that I highly appreciate the efforts made by the press, both the Dutch press and the international press, in explaining what is essentially a very complicated issue to the public. Because a process like this can only be successful if it is supported by a public opinion, if it is supported by people who understand what the essence is of what we're trying to do. And on this point, I must say that at the end of this conference, if we can come to the conclusion that the chance of nuclear material getting into the wrong hands and thus becoming part of a direct threat to our populations, if that chance is diminished by what we have done here, what we're going to be doing here in the next couple of days, I think we can speak of a great success, not for us, not for the Netherlands, but for humanity as a whole. And I wish that we can, both of us, we on the side of the policy makers and the politicians, you on the side of the public and journalism, we can contribute to a better understanding of what the international community is doing here to ensure more security and to ensure that nuclear material, which is essential to our energy supplies, to our health care, to our industries, to our scientific research, is only used for peaceful means, for means uh, necessary to create more prosperity, to create more advancement of humanity as a whole and will not be used in the hands of those who are willing to kill and maim and create havoc around the world. Once again, thank you very much for attending. And I want to stress, if there's anything we can do from our side to make your stay here more comfortable, to make your stay here professionally more interesting, let us know, and we'll do our best to ensure that you are fully served. Thank you. I'll echo the Prime Minister and the Minister of Foreign Affairs in welcoming you uh, to The Hague and welcoming you to this uh, beautiful museum, in my view, one of the most beautiful museums in the, in the world, the uh, Gemeente Museum, the municipal museum here in the city of The Hague. Uh, museum which, uh, in my view, as the liberalism in the philosophical sense of uh, the world, the sense of uh, community and tolerance in line with the thinking of the architect of this museum, the famous Dutch architect Berlage. The museum is a phenomenal uh, collection, including the largest Mondrian collection in the world. Mondrian, the famous Dutch painter. And here you can see one of his most renowned works, uh, the Victory Boogie Woogie, painted in 1944, during the Second uh, World War. The United States offered Mondrian shelter and Mondrian offered the United States the Mondrian mo modern art in, uh, in return. The people uh, of uh, The Hague, the inhabitants of The Hague, are looking forward to welcoming the world leaders, the delegates of the NSS, and of course you, the journalists, reporting about the NSS and hopefully a tiny bit about the city uh, of The Hague. Since time uh, in uh, memorial, The Hague has always been an open and tolerant city. Every language of the world is spoken here. Every faith is practiced here. Here, in the heart of the international zone, you can literally feel the wind of tolerance blowing from the sea. Our city, home to more than, uh, what, let's more or less 160 international organizations, NGOs, EU, UN institutions, and the only official body of the United Nations outside New York, the International Court of Justice, is here. The Hague is a UN city. 
Everywhere in the world, uh, the city of The Hague stands for a better world, a world without uh, ethnic cleansing, a world without weapons threatening mankind. The Hague, um, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished members of the press, The Hague has hosted many international uh, conferences over the year. The peace conferences of 1899 and 1907 here in the city of The Hague ushered into a new era of humanity with a great contribution from the then American president, Theodore Roosevelt. It was a conference trying to prevent 1914. The idea of a united uh, Europe was born here in 1948 in a conference chaired by Sir Winston Churchill. And in 2009, the Afghanistan conference was held here in the city, organized in a lightning uh, speed. And five years later, The Hague is ready for the NSS conference. After a month of preparation, everything is now in place. Hard work, but everything is in place, including the security measures. And I can assure you, you can feel safe everywhere in the city of The Hague. We are proud to host this conference in The Hague, where countless people work to uh, make the world a little bit safer. Thank you very much.